Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. It is the 1st of December, Anno Domini 2020. It is Tuesday evening. And tonight, our psalm is the 68th psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the sol solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God, you shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. The Lord gives the word. The woman who announced the news are a great host. The kings of the armies, they flee. They flee. The women at home divide the spoil. Though you men lie among the sheepfolds, the wings of the dove covered with silver, its pinions with shimmering gold, when the Almighty scatters kings there, let snow fall on Zalman. Uh, o mountain of God, mountain of Bashan, O many peaked mountain, mountains of Bashan, why do you look with hatred? O many peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, yes, where the Lord will dwell forever. The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, ten thousand upon thousands. The Lord is among them. Sinai now is in the sanctuary. You ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious, that the Lord God may dwell there. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Glory and praise and honor belong to you, Lamb of God, because you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, and have led our captivity captive. Pour out your Spirit upon the dry soil of our hearts, that he may cause faith and love to spring up in them and bring fruit unto eternal life. In Jesus' holy name. We continue tonight with our study of St. Luke's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 8 through 10. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. So far in the text. So evidently, his law. Now, to be able to be in the temple meant that you had to be of the priestly order. And of course, we know that his wife was a child of Aaron. A, well, great, 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 whatever, granddaughter of Aaron. But in that bloodline and lineage. And he was, of course, of the uh, Abijai. But it was the Levitical priesthood, and it was the Aaronic priesthood that were allowed to serve in the temple, and evidently his bloodlines tied into that area. And what they did is they used lots, like rolling of dice, to determine whose turn it was. It was considered not a chore, but a great privilege to be able to go in, because the place you would go in to burn the incense was a place called the holy place. So you had the, the common kind of place, 
Then you had the holy place, then you had the holy of holies. Well, only the chief priest once a year could go into the holy of holies. But the holy place is where most of the thanksgiving offerings were done and the burning of incense. Matter of fact, it was common when the chief priest would go in, he would take a bunch of incense with him as he would go into the Holy of Holies to create lots of smoke because fear of seeing God. And if you saw God, you would surely die. So the Levitical priesthood, the Aaronic priesthoods, their job was to set up and take care and, and provide uh, for the temple. In this particular time, uh, Zechariah had the opportunity but what I want you to notice is he didn't consider it a chore, but an opportunity. And secondly, what was everyone else doing? And when the time for burning of incense came, so there was a time allocated that that would occur. Because typically, smoke and God are connected. So, so uh, God traveled through the wilderness as a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night. Smoke is connected to the presence of God. And so it still is when it comes to incense. Um, there are several psalms that talk about raising a beautiful uh, odor or fragrance to the Lord. So um, may our prayers rise before you as incense. Uh, so incense is a very spiritual thing, very important thing. And he won the right to do it that day. And probably for that week. And notice though that all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. So with this burning of incense came an ordered prayer service. They would know what the order was, and they would join in. So today, the pastor quite often prays in front of the church, but he tries to incorporate or have the others join in. Uh, we do the same thing with psalms. Typically with the psalm, a, a verse or two verses are chanted by the pastor, and the congregation responds. In the early church, often you had men and women, or left and right, that would do it. So it would be spoken, or actually chanted, and then responded, like a figure eight. It's kind of the eternal sign. But the way things were chanted back then, was that at the final note, like, Let us pray to the Lord. They would join in on that same note, let us pray. Pray would be the same note to the Lord. And so they would kick right in, so you have this overlapping sweep. And it would go back and forth and back and forth. The prayers were much like that as well. And quite possibly, Zechariah was in there chanting the prayers, and the people were outside responding. But regardless, it's a very holy scene, and it leads up to a very interesting passage. Listen to the rest of it. We'll get into that tonight. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. So evidently, Zechariah has prayed quite often. The angel seems to know that, that he's been praying for a child. And it's a little weird that he would name this child John. It was the custom, as is many in our society today, the eldest child is named after the father. And the father is typically named after the father if he's the firstborn. And so John would be their only child, and it would make sense that he would be named Zechariah. But the angel says, no, you will name him John. Of course, think about what that might bring about. If he names him John, and John's not his name, then what are people going to assume? So, who in the community is named John? That we might know who this father is. So Zechariah, at that point, would appear to be the one incapable of fathering a child. And his wife, then, would look also as if she was not loyal to him. But we know better than that. And so... This will become a blessing, and he will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. Now, when you think of John, I know babies we can always rejoice, and many will have joy over his birth, but when you think of John, do you think of him as the type of guy that you would snuggle with, cuddle with, 
spend a lot of time with as an adult. I mean, look at him. He wears those funny clothes. He wears camel skin or camel hair. Now, I don't know if any of you remember the days back when cars used to have horsehair uh, upholstery. My grandmother used to drive my brothers and myself to Sunday school and her old Plymouth had horsehair upholstery. We'd get out of the car and we'd start picking the horsehair out of our pants. It was prickly, it was bristly. And I imagine camel's hair was the same way. And yet, here he is wearing camel's hair. Or think about his dietary ideology. Locust and wild honey. Now, I can understand locusts, and we're not talking locusts being. The Greek's very clear about that. We're talking about grasshoppers. And yes, they were allowed in the diet. Now, I would say that probably that alone would make it a keto diet, because grasshoppers are protein. Probably very good protein, if I recall. But then he had honey. That's high carbs. You can't mix those. But what a diet! Not very balanced. And then he was a preacher of some of the strictest, toughest language around. Constantly repent. Now, is that the type of person that brings great joy? Why would it say that? Well, he will be a joy and delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will never take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. So, he will be a joy, because he is a joy in the eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the world have problems with people like John or Jesus, maybe you or me. But you see, the joy in the eyes of the Lord, now that's the most important thing. And John, indeed, was a joy in the eyes of the Lord. John's message helped prepare the way of the coming of the Lord. Here we are in Advent, a time when we say, Come, Lord Jesus, come, come quickly, or come now. John prepares the people for the first coming of the Lord. He also prepares us for the second coming. And so we start to read about John, and we'll read more about him. But he is a man who will speak what God tells him to speak. He is the last of the Old Testament prophets, and his message is important for us. Repent, which means turn. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is close at hand. And that's all for tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God's blessings. Have a great night in the Lord.